Are you cozy in your Hampshire brand jammies? Have you got a bowl of Hampshire brand breakfast cereal? Are you surrounded by the official Hampshire playsets and action figures? Because it's time for another episode of The Hampshire Show with me, your host, Crazy Internet Hamster Man. Because, according to YouTube metrics, almost nobody watches the videos all the way through, I thought I'd start out by announcing that I have an Amazon Affiliates storefront now at Amazon.com slash shop slash I chose Hampshire. And if you've ever watched one of my videos and seen a component or gadget that you liked and wanted to get your hands on, if you buy it through this site, it'll throw some money my way that does not come out of your pocket. I mean, if you were planning on getting one of these things anyhow, this is a way that you can further contribute to Hampshire that doesn't cost you a dime. You may recognize some of these items from my past videos, like the little remote control submarine that I used in an aquarium videos, the robots, uh, one of the clear dry cases. It's all here. There's the suitcase battery, drill, the Loctite, the solar panels, all, all the exact stuff that I've used, as well as some books that I read in order to learn about the engineering principles of underwater habitats. So this is where you can get it. If you see anything in my videos and you're like, I want that, uh, get it through the Amazon storefront, amazon.com slash shop slash I chose Hampshire, and contribute a little bit more to the glorious cause of underwater hamster objectivism. I don't really have any major progress to show on the habitat. Anyone who follows me on Twitter saw over the past couple days I sort of pioneered the purging system and implemented it. Instead of trying to purge through the seals, as advised, that would be a, a bad idea because it could just as easily escape out the top as the bottom. I instead drilled a hole in the top and the bottom of the tube which will normally remain covered with the rubber band when not in use, but then it can be pulled back, the airline can be inserted, and this goes up to the, to one of the outputs on the compressor, and then it forces, the compressed air forces the water out the bottom of the tube. This happens while the gate valves are closed, and then once all the water's out, you can open them safely. And of course, to separate the modules, you just do the, that uh, operation in reverse. <laughs> he's doing it! <laughs> he's, he's choosing the impossible! This is what it looks like. Look at how small this very small tiny hamster is compared to the rest of the structure. Come on. Come on out. You have to learn objectivism sometime. Who's very interested in that little screen? Megahab just absolutely dwarfs him. This should really please the people who have been wanting a larger habitat for a while. Oh, he's coming out this end. Can you see him? Nice spacious tubes. The tubes in um, the Mark III habitat were just exactly large enough in diameter that the hamsters could squeeze through. But that was suboptimal. I just didn't know the right diameter when I bought them. And was short on cash, so I didn't get any better replacements. Um, because of that, they had to touch the, the tunnel walls as they passed through them. And of course, because the tubes were in direct contact with water that was quite cold, whereas these are larger than necessary, which not only means they don't have to touch the tunnel walls except with their feet while passing through them, but also that they can squeeze by each other, which makes them less likely to fight. He 
He's confused by tunnel technology. Don't worry, little guy. Lots of people are confused by all this. Probably for different reasons. The landmark moment, though, for this project is going to be seeing him do this underwater. Like, when everything is submerged and in an operation, having the webcam capture these little guys using the tube to go from one habitat to the other. Unless they just choose to live out the rest of their lives in the tube, which looks like a distinct possibility. It's cozy in there. I'm still not totally clear on how much they're going to pick up from Ayn Rand. Like, at their intelligence level, with a brain the size of a pea, how much can they really absorb from this? But, you guys wanted it, so there it is. So as you can see, I've updated the playlist considerably. Um, it's important to advertise fictional products to hamsters for several convincing reasons, which uh, I'll tell you when you're older. Cat. Cat, please. Please, cat. You want to be in the video? You want to be a star, do you? I was... I was doing something, though. I was in the middle of something. I can't say no to her, either. Because she's getting old. She's going to die one day. Well, I know I'll regret it when that happens if I didn't spend as much time with her as I could. Many hours later... On a lighter note... Besides being obsessed with underwater habitation and life support, I've also long been obsessed with batteries. Can you tell me what all these gadgets have in common? 
You don't care? Well, I'm gonna tell you. They all run on the same cell. The 18650. This is a lithium ion cell that you've probably seen in vape stores. This is also what's inside of most laptop batteries if they're not LiPo. Being lithium ion, it's tremendously more energy dense than, than the AA batteries that typically power small consumer electronics. This is like equivalent to four or five alkaline AA's. And you can get all sorts of products if you know what to look for that run on these instead of AA's and will give you dr drastically drastically increased runtime per charge and cycle life including power banks of the sort that let you choose your own cells and open up easily without any tools so that if one of the cells goes bad you don't have to toss the whole thing or get out the screwdriver and soldering iron to repair it you can just open it up and look at the display and it'll tell you which one is sagging below the, the charge level of the rest every time you try to recharge it and you can just replace that cell with a new one which I think is pretty snazzy but there's also these other things flashlights everybody knows about it's got the nice illuminated button and it turns red when it's running out so you don't have to be caught by surprise in the dark if you're in a fucking cave or someplace that you're likely to die it also charges directly by a micro USB all these things do so you don't have to take the cell out to, and put it into a separate charger that you have to lug with you. You can just charge it the same way you would your phone. This has got one too. So does the electric razor. You can buy micro USB razors that are lithium ion. And this doesn't open up easily, but it's got a 18650 in it. So when I'm camping, I can shave and I have an electric toothbrush. Also micro USB, and I can p power all this. I can recharge all of it off of this thing. I don't have to take my big suitcase battery with me and a bunch of 110 volt wall wart style chargers. I can just take this little deck of cards style sized uh, power bank, and this will keep all of these nice amenities running for many days, including this lighter for starting a fire. This also charges from micro USB. And if it's a hot day, if I'm out there in the summer, which is usually when I camp, I have this necklace fan which hangs around my neck, sucks air in the front through this thing and shoots it out the top. And it's tremendously more powerful than those smaller ones you've probably seen at air shows or something that run on a AA battery. And they're just weak, they're not any good. But this thing has lithium power. Sounds like a hair dryer. Sounds like a fucking hurricane. This really does the job and is actually a great relief to have on a hot day. And powered by an 18650 that's field replaceable and charges from micro USB. So why am I showing you all this stuff? Besides illustrating my never ending quest to run everything in my life off of lithium ion 18650 batteries, uh, just to standardize and to have a much better experience than can be had with the venerable but obsolete alkaline batteries or rechargeable NIMS. Um, I have also been asked to show some of my other projects. Uh, one of them is my car and it's very optimized for camping and all this stuff is stuff that I standardized around 18650s and micro USB for camping reasons so that I can charge it easily from power banks and from solar panels. So let's go take a look at the Mad Science Mobile and all this shit and why I showed it to you will make more sense. The first accessory I bought for this car was the rooftop carrier. These things are shockingly expensive. You wouldn't think they would be, or at least I wouldn't. But I didn't want to lug all this crap around in the trunk and I knew I'd want to take a lot of stuff with me because if I was going to bother to buy a car in the first place, given the high expense of insurance and all that shit and maintenance I wanted to maximize utility and I love to get out and camp and I also have a crippling fear of either that society will collapse or just that my life will fall apart and I'll be homeless and I figured besides saving my pennies the only thing I can do about that is to try to front load as much uh, preparation as I possibly can ahead of time so that if worse comes to worse it, I at least won't be terribly 
uncomfortable or unsafe. To that end, we've got the bicycle pump for refilling the tires. I have an electric one as well, but I like backups. Uh, vacuum, which is lithium powered. Everything in my life is lithium powered. I decided a long time ago the batteries were not good enough the way they were and everything needed to be lithium powered. Um, I have an electric blanket. It's sealed in here to keep you know, moisture from, so from being absorbed into it when it's in storage. And I can run the electric blanket off of the car's battery. I have an inverter in there. Um, so when I'm sleeping in here, uh, I, I'm nice and toasty overnight. And, and in fact, when I go camping, I put the car into hold mode. Hold mode uh, runs it preferentially on gasoline and saves the battery for when I get there and need it for uh, house power, so to speak. I've got this little lunchbox stove or oven which consumes a, su a surprisingly small amount of power. This is something like 155 watts or something. And I compared this to small microwaves, which don't really work. There's a lot of them on the market. But they don't quite do the job. This thing does the job. It just takes longer and takes drastically less power. I wouldn't have expected that. I would have thought that an oven would suck down more power than a microwave, but surprisingly, no. Um, Emergency roadside supplies. I've got my flamethrower in here, you know, in case I need to throw any flames. I've got first aid. I've got dry food. I've got a bunch of uh, supplies. I've got a phone VR thing in case I'm bored. Um, let's see. Inside, I've got a spare battery pack for my heated pants. Another one of these power banks I love so much with their replaceable cells. Also, my heated jacket runs off of these. So besides being able to share power between my devices and my jacket, I can also power my devices off my jacket as needed. There's a MiFi in here for internet someplace. I forget where. You got the 300 watt inverter. I have two of these because the power the car can uh, put out a maximum of 600 watts. In the back, solar backpacks one and two. This is my old one, it's flexible. It's only 4.5 watts, however, and that was when it was new. They degrade quickly. Uh, there used to be a panel up here too. Um, I don't know where that went, I'm gonna have to track that down. But I sewed these LED floodlights onto these straps so that when I bring a guest camping with me, like whoever I'm dating at the time or just one of my buddies, uh, they can supply some of the light. This is the newer one I replaced it with. It's got 10 watts of solar. The rigid panels are not as cool looking as the flexible ones, but they are much higher output and generally more durable too, because you don't think about how many times you're going to flex that flexible panel when you're unzipping the back of the backpack and not doing it all the way. It's got glass water bottle because I don't want plastics in what I'm drinking. Um, the power equipment stuff is all in here. The panel recharges this lithium polymer battery pack which then can supply 12 volt power up to 19 volt power um, for laptops. It can also provide USB power to charge another one of these power banks that I um, I swear by. I love this particular model. I have I think four of these. I used to have five. I gave away one as a gift. Um, all my drone stuff is in here the controller and the spare battery. The drone itself is in the bag. Underneath the backpacks, there's this stack of three uh, wood-backed foam fabric-lined cushions that fits perfectly into the space back here. And there's a reason for that. I'll show you in a minute after I fold down those seats. Now this is a little tricky. In order to fold the back seats all the way flat, you have to remove these seat cushions. Anyway, there it is all set up. It's something closely resembling an actual bed. And it's pretty comfortable when you get the uh, heated blanket and everything set up. And I've seen a lot of setups that are similar to van dweller setups where it's like a truck with a covered back and they just have a wooden cabinet and something propping up like an inflatable mattress or something. I didn't want that because I wanted something that was going to be Nice enough to where, I wouldn't say I look forward to sleeping in it, but I don't dread it. Like, I can look at this and if I'm weary and I'm stuck somewhere waiting for a tow truck, 
up the side of a mountain during a snowstorm or whatever, I can kick back and sleep here and feel pretty good about it and feel cozy. And I think it's welcoming. Uh, you do kind of have to mangle the car like to, to uh, set it up this way. You have to remove this, the back seat pads and then slide the, the front seats all the way forward and lean them all the way forward. So there's a, a lot that goes into transforming it. But I bought this car um, for a number of reasons, but not the least of which was the fact that there exists a cottage industry that makes these cool aftermarket modifications for it and that it's extremely spacious for car camping and the back can be turned into a bed. Of course, there's also a switch in the back seat for entertainment, either after the car has been converted into a bed or just for passengers on road trips or when I'm driving buddies around. Oh, and I don't know if it's worth calling attention to, but I've got these dedicated trash bags just so anybody riding with me doesn't have an excuse to put their trash anywhere I wouldn't like them to, and there's one in the front as well. It's an important little detail for keeping the car nice. There's also the electric scooter, which I can uh, pack up and, and stow in the trunk and charge from the car itself. I can use it to get around large campsites. And the custom fucking monster e-bike that I built from the ground up, but that's going to be the subject of another video in itself. Oh yeah, this thing. I also have an on-demand water heater. The water heating is done using propane, but there's also a built-in battery powered pump to suction the water from whatever you're storing it in and heat it up and you can have a nice shower. So maybe I went a little overboard with all this, but I go overboard with everything. And there's kind of a unifying theme, you know? There's there's a method to this madness. And that is, if you're going to have these electric-powered things, like electric jacket, electric pants, electric car, you really should ensure they're interoperable in order to get the most use out of them. Because otherwise, you're going to have situations where you're stuck halfway up a mountain... And your pants are keeping you nice and warm, good for you, but your phone's out of battery. And you can't do shit because even though you have a giant lithium battery powering your pants, there's no way to, there's no port to charge your phone from, which is why I made sure the batteries for this one had a USB port. I made sure everything was the same battery chemistry, that it was USB interoperable, that anything that else, that, uh, had power in it, I could get power from that to whatever I happened to need. I can charge the phone from my pants, I can charge the pants batteries and my jacket batteries from the solar backpack. I can use the solar backpack to charge my laptop. My laptop can charge the USB batteries from my jacket or any of the other devices. Everything can charge everything. If I have power stored somewhere, even if that's all I have left, I can get it to where it needs to be in a situation where it really counts. And that's that's the name of the game. I mean, if you're going to spend money on this kind of shit, it ought to really do the job. And it ought to never uh, leave you stuck in a situation where you have the power you need, but you have no way to, to do with it what you need to. Well, that's the video. Hope you found that interesting. A welcome or unwelcome insight into my life, such as it is. I guess the takeaway is uh, when you're buying gear, if you're serious about it and you're not just buying cool novelties, you got to make sure that it does what you want it to, that everything works with everything else, and that if you're really in a situation where you're relying on it for your survival or just not to be miserable because you're stuck someplace overnight, uh, that everything works with everything else and does what it promised on the packaging. I mean... Shit should really do what it promises, right? I mean, who are these people selling gear that people are going to depend on in emergency situations, knowing that it falls short in some crucial area, or that you're going to get snagged in some situation where you have the power you need to charge your phone and call for help, but you can't get it to the phone? Um, it's like when you were a kid and there would be those ads in comic books for your own x-ray goggles or sea monkeys, and in invariably it was just a huge disappointment. No more disappointments! Uh, you know, it's not a disappointment, though. Just to end on a little bit of good news. 
We're monetized, bitches.